Okay, so this is the cribbage board that we will be making. And you can see that there's no finger hole uh, because what I do is I I put this into the cover into the laser machine um, after in order to um, engrave it and cut out the hole. Um, so these three pieces, the uh, magnets that get glued down to the bottom, as well as the cover itself, um, are all post assembly so that way I can customize them. So I can make a lot of these bases ahead of time and then all I need to do is create the design for the cover and um, engrave it as well as cut out that center hole. And then I glue everything together in place and um, put a final coat of shellac over the top of it. Um, this right here is made out of mahogany and uh, it's the mahogany pie available on Home Depot. And what I do is I shellac the board on both sides um, before I do the engraving. That way I can clean off any uh, smoke or res residual uh, burning off of the cribbage board without actually damaging the wood. And then what I do is I glue everything together uh, with this E6000 glue uh, right here. This E6000 right here. Um, and um, it holds together very strong. I have not had any issues with it. I've been making these for over a year now. I've sold hundreds of them. And um, this video is going to show you how to make this final product. So what I have here is I have all the pieces laid out. This all cuts out of two sheets. So the uh, sides and the interior, as well as the uh, top panel with all of the uh, holes and um, the, in the, the cover, all cut out into one sheet. And then the base right here uh, cuts out on another sheet and there's enough waste um, on that uh, secondary sheet that I can make other projects out of it. So I don't really waste anything even though this uh, is a small portion of that uh, large uh, proof grade material type shape um, or board and this right here is the, the bottom that uh, goes into it and in addition to this uh, we have these uh, small magnets that get placed into the um, into the uh, interior of the cribbage board right here on these two pieces and there's two of these also uh, that get glued to the cover and that helps it um, get uh, help uh, keep um, or be held into place okay so this is the uh, tarp, top part that's cut out, and here's the panel that is cut out of it. And you can see that not all of the holes have um, have been cut out cleanly. Uh, that does happen on occasion, depending on the variation in material thickness, hardness, whatnot. Um, but these are very easy to remove. You can either push them out um, individually. Um, or since this is going to be on the interior of the um, cribbage board, you're not going to actually see it. And you can feel free to use something like this just to drag across it and pop out all of the holes. I usually do this over a trash can, so that way it doesn't make a big giant mess. Okay. You can see here I have all the holes cleaned out now. That took less than 10 seconds using this little tool right here. And that's all this is, is just a piece of metal handle. It's actually off of a, uh, a leather, leather dauber to be used, or a dauber to be used for leather. And I usually keep a few of these. You can see right here, this is a little leather dauber. And I just cut the end off of it and I just file or sand the uh, end just to round it off so it glides a little bit easier and pops up the holes. Okay, so I'm going to take this little metal block that uh, 
we use on our arbor press and I'm going to use this as a base to insert the magnet into. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that um, when I do the parts that glue onto the cover, I have to flip the magnets over. So I'm gonna insert these first. So this is the top part of the insert. So that is this part right here. And now that I've put those in, I flip this magnet over and, or these magnets over, and there's one piece right here, I don't know if you can tell, it has uh, score lines on it. Uh, that's to help with adhesion to the cover. And what I do is I put the magnet flat on the opposite side. So I take this, which is the um, part that's scored, and I flip it over. So I have the magnet, and I flip this over as well. And I just tap those in. Now these are pretty secure. And I, even though they are secure, I do put a little bit of super glue on the inside of the hole. So just put a little dab inside here just to make sure that it doesn't move around. And if you're impatient like I am, you can use some of this accelerator. This is through uh, Starbond. You can get it right on our website. And then I put the two cover pieces or the attachments with the cover. I put those off to the side and I'm just going to keep these for the next part. So I'll move my anvil out of the way or block out of the way. Now I'm going to get everything else ready. So the first part we're going to assemble is the interior. And I just like to get my parts in position so that I'm ready to glue them up. I use the E6000. It's been a while since I've used this tube. Get it started. Okay. So on this end piece, I only have to glue it in a couple positions. This is just to make sure it doesn't move around. Same thing for this one. So little tabs here on the inside. Okay. And then for these two pieces, which are the sides of the curbage board here. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here on the tabs. Put a little glue right here. Okay. So the tab over here is going to get this solid piece. And then this one goes in right beside it, and you can see that it is flush. Okay, so on the finest final piece, that's this section right here. Then these two pieces that have the finger cutouts. This right here is the tray for, or the section for the cribbage pegs. This is the section for the cards, and this is just an empty section in the front. And you want to make sure that the magnets are flush to the top. Okay, you can see the difference. These are not flush, these are the flush sides. Take your ends and put these on either side. This one, put it on this side. Then the other. Piece that finishes the enclosure goes on just like that. So now I have this tray, and this tray is going to go into the base next. So my base is right here. 
here. Okay, you can see that these tabs here all line up these tabs. Now all I do is I put glue on one side. Each of the tabs. I put a little glue on each of the corners. And I put a little bit of a glue just on the inside of the card trays. Um, and the reason why I do this is that I've had a couple of them that the cards have bounced around just enough where it actually broke this tray. Um, so I, I glued in place um, just to give it a little bit of extra stability. And then this right here slides right in. And depending on your material thickness, um, this is designed for 1.98, and you will have varying thicknesses for the um, for the material. However, I find that um, even if it goes in a little bit hard, that's that's okay. If it goes to you know, uh, if it varies in thickness between 0.198 and 0.21. It goes together fairly easy. Um, might need a little bit of assistance. So you just essentially just put it in. Um, most uh, hammer it in. Uh, most of the time, it just slides right in, no problem. And you just make sure that it's flush. There's no gaps. There's no warping. Double check to make sure it's not twisted. If it is, I'm just going to give it a little bit of twist just to make sure that when I put the whole thing together, it doesn't have any kind of uh, any kind of twist to it, okay? So now I have the base assembled. I'm going to take each of the sides, so I have uh, two ends and two sides that I'm going to assemble, and these go right into position just like this, okay? So what we're doing, as we're assembling the ends and the sides. And there's a little trick to it in order to make sure that you have glue um, on both sides of um, the finger joint with minimal gluing. And what I do is I go uh, on the top part of the base, on the inside, on the top part I go clockwise, and then on each of the ends I go counterclockwise. That way I'm guaranteed to get glue when it's fully assembled on both edges of that finger. Okay, so it is, and also it's, it goes together a lot faster because now I'm just doing glue in one direction very fast and after a little while you get very quick at doing these. I put a little bit of extra glue on each of the corners just to make sure it's nice and stable on each corner and you can see that there's a little little bubble of glue right here on each side of that finger joint. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise on this one and I put a little bit of extra on the, end, on the ends or on the corners. All right, and I start in one hole that helps line it up, and then I position it into the other hole. And I can do one of the ends, uh, one of the sides. Again, a little bit of extra glue. Going counterclockwise, and after a while, you'll you'll just uh, intuitively just say clockwise, counterclockwise as you're assembling it. Okay. Instead of trying to get it to go in here and try to get the finger joints lined up at the same time, I tend to go on the opposite side, so that way it's already kind of in position, and it helps me hold it in place while I get all the fingers stuck together, okay? Make sure it all goes 
end are good. Okay, now I'm going to do one of the other ends. Counterclockwise. Last one's always the hardest. You could kind of wiggle it into the finger joints here and try to get it into that bottom post at the same time. And then get everything in like so. Okay, so now we have our base completely done. And we have to find the top piece to put down somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay. So now, for this one, what I want to do is I want to make sure that my starting point, okay, so this is the starting point of the cribbage board, is on the same side as this opening here, okay, the one with the curve. And that's because that's the side that I want the finger hole to be in. So the finger hole, finger hole, I want to be right here in this spot because I don't want it over here because that's where the little gap or the little tray is. That tray doesn't really have any function. Um, it's just a, a spacer. Okay. So same thing as before with the with the base. I want to put the glue on in a clockwise fashion. clockwise and put a little bit of extra glue in the corners and again you can see you got a little bead right there and the next thing I want to do I want the glue on the inside edge of here just a little bit so that it glues onto this edge here. I don't want very much because I don't want to accidentally glue the cover on um, when I put it in place. So I just put just a little bead here. And if I get anything, if I go if I go too far to the edge, like if I accidentally do that, then I just take my finger and just clean it off. Doesn't have to be very much. Just helps keep everything in position, keeps everything squared up. Okay. Now I have my base and I have my cover. And you just to start wiggling it into position and putting it into place and it locks in just like that. Okay. So now it's all set, but we need to make sure this glues nice and square. Um, I don't have a camera on my other table, but essentially what we do, what I have is I have a piece of glass that I press this down onto to make sure that it's completely flat. So I'll press this down, and sometimes you'll notice that it kind of like rocks back and forth between two corners. If that's the case, I just give it just a little bit of a twist. You see, I'm just gonna twist it just like this with both hands just to make sure that it com it's completely square. So I'll, I'll check each corner to make sure it's completely flat. And once I know that it's flat, I very gently put on either these kind of clamps. I hold it uh, on each edge like so, just to make sure everything stays together. Or my favorite so far is these corner clamps. And these clamps go on each corner. Like 
cell and it came apart. Okay, and then you just turn this handle to tighten it up. And I just make sure it's nice and tight, but not too tight that it warps it. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this over my glass real quick, make sure it's nice level. It is. And I gave it like a little twist. And I tighten this up a little bit more. Okay. And I still, I'm going to take these clamps here. Okay. And I'm just going to make sure that these aren't popped out. So I'm going to push this in. Just put one on each edge, put one there, make sure I push in in this direction, put one there, again push in that direction, and put one here. Okay, so I have four clamps on here with the four uh, corner clamp on as well. And just so that I don't lose the pieces, I take these two magnets, put them inside of here. And then I take the cover, put that on, the, on, the, on there as well, and I just put this off to the side to dry. Now you'll notice that I did have a small defect over here. And it's in the, in the actual board itself. Let's see if I can find it again. Okay, so this hole, try to get it so you can see it. You see this hole right here? Okay, that's pretty common. And what I usually do is I take a little bit of this brown Starbond super glue and I'll put that on that hole like so. toothpick and you stick it in there and just snap it off. Okay, a little bit more. Stick it in there Oops. and snap it off. Okay, then I'll come back and I'll put a little bit of stain on that and um, you'll never even notice that it was there. Okay, I'm just going to double check because sometimes that line runs through the whole thing and it looks like it does stop, so I'm good there. All right. So the next part, uh, once I get an order, is I um, set it up so that there's a little jig that holds the cover. That's all it is, just a little cardboard jig that this gets placed into. So what I do is in the actual engraving and design file, I have one line that cuts out the cardboard template to, or the jig. So you can see I've used this piece of cardboard twice. So I tape this down to the bed and then I glue it into place. I'm oh, sorry, tape it into place. And then I put the design on and I slide this into position and it holds it perfect and then it goes through and engraves the or does the score line it cuts the hole out and then it engraves the image over the top of it okay that's it if you have any questions or need me to demonstrate anything let me know one thing i did forget to mention 
is that when you're gluing the uh, little magnet pieces here, okay, um, I place these into the base. So I place these into the base, but what I do is I have to put a little spacer in there. So I just have like a piece of paper towel that acts as a spacer. That way I know that this is in good contact with the cover without having to worry about the thickness of the board itself. Okay. So I put these into place. I put the E6000 along the edge here. And then I also put in a couple drops of the super glue along that edge and again making sure that the hole and the wood grain and everything line up properly with the board I put all of this together I hold it in place for a second and then I take a clamp and I hold the cover in place until I know that both the super glue and the E6000 had have enough time to set in. And that's, this is at, done after it's been engraved. I do have one final cleanup. I take any of the, um, any of the residual glue. I have this piece of leather that has these like little score lines on it. Um, and I just rub it on the outside edge like so and get any of those little balls of glue, the E6000 that kind of stick out, get any of those, clean them right off. It just pulls them right off. Okay, you can see one right there. Let's get in there and peel it off. Okay. Then I'll take this, once this has been glued, I take the, or dried, I take the clamps off and I do another coat of shellac uh, to protect the engraving and just to give it a little uh, nice luster uh, before I ship it out.